listeners, this is Lauren here today. Thank you so much for joining us again. We are here today with the wonderful Annemarie Pultgieter here from CrossFit here in the Wild Coast um, in Margate. Thank you so much for joining us today, Annemarie. Um, last week we looked at the importance of health, eating properly, having a healthy lifestyle. We all know it's a lifestyle, it's not a diet that we are following. But a very important part of that is also proper exercise. Um, so something that I always used to say is that abs are made in the kitchen. <laughs> so it's so incredibly true. important that we also understand that it's incredibly important also to exercise and to make it part of our daily routine. So Anna-Marie, before we start reading Proverbs 31 like we do every week, please just give us a short introduction of yourself and then we can go over to reading scripture. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Lauren. My name is Anna-Marie Bodgieter and I'm a CrossFit Parkers personal trainer. I'm also a um, functional fitness coach. Um, I coach the Platinum Crew, which is ladies all the way from 55 and up. Wonderful. And I've also got my personal training, my one-on-one clients. And your yeah, across the world goes, we try and cater for everybody, whether you like to do class work or whether you like to do um, individual work as well. That is wonderful. Yeah, it's so important. And I'm so happy that there are people that actually look after the older generation because it doesn't get easier as you get older. It's, you actually reap the benefits of what you did when you were younger Absolutely. or when you are older so it's incredibly important that you start as as early as possible right. thank you very much for that introduction Anami. and then if you can just go ahead reading proverbs 31 verse 10 to 31 for us and we will be reading from the new king james version thank you so much okay is the heading as the virtuous wife um who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above ru- rubies the heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it's yet night and provides food for her household and a portion of her maidservants. She considers the field, she considers the field and buys it. From her profit, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. This is very nice. I love that too. She perceives, perceives that her merchant, merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hand to the distaff and her hand holds the spin, spindle. She extends her hand to the poor, yet she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid to, to, for snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters I have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Yeah. You know, I, I was at a ladies meeting this morning and it was so ironic how Proverbs 31 just always comes up as a conversation when you're between so many ladies. And we all understand that that is important that we look at all those different verses that makes up what a virtuous woman look like. So for you, um, Anna-Marie, what are the verses that really stand out? You as a personal trainer, we're sitting here at the wonderful um, CrossFit here in the Wild Coast, in Margate, in the studio and the gym. And um, for you, what are the verses that stand out? Just the strength that she's got, her physical strength yes. and her mental strength that she's got, yes. and how she will do anything for her family. And then she's also got enough strength and enough for other people, for, for helping other people in time of their needs. And then how God blesses her in everything that she does. I agree 100%. And what is very um, obvious from that verse as well is that she's got strong arms. Yes. And let's face it, Anna Marie, we're not going to get strong arms if we're sitting around gossiping, doing 
nothing, being Absolutely. lazy, getting up at 11 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> going for a shower or half an hour, do your hair for an hour. That is not really going to contribute to strong arms. Definitely and then also she's not lazy. I mean, you can see this woman is a mover and shaker. And I mean, if you want to get stuff done, you just call this woman. And it will get done because she is known for being that woman. And, you know, so, and I also think um, what is very important in that piece is, um, you know, how, if that, we put that woman in 2024, mm. she has got a lot on her plate. And normally a woman that I've got so much on her plate is going to have a little bit of stress. Will you agree with me? Definitely. In her life? Because she has to juggle so many things. So, Anna-Marie, in your experience, do you think exercising helps to cope with stress? Exercise definitely helps to cope with stress. Um, you will find that 99 of your problems are just simple things that can be sorted out by just a little bit of training. Yeah. Um, the training also releases hormones, yeah. um, endorphins that yeah. make you feel better and makes you feel good about yourself. And it just gives you another new breath, a new strength to carry on with your daily routine after training. So training really does help with that. I agree. And for me personally, um, what's something that I really enjoy doing is dancing. And I specifically mm -hmm. love line dancing. And especially because um, statistics uh, has proven as well that because of dancing as well, you learn choreography. And it's very good for your brain as well. It's not only physically, but also, um, you know, brain exercise, training your brain. Mm -hmm. It's not just about your body, it's your brain as well. And, and, you know, so, and what we are saying today is that it doesn't have to be that strenuous weight necessarily. You don't have to look like a bodybuilder. Uh, but it's really important to tone as well. I mean, as we get older, we know that we lose, um, you know, the, the suppleness in our muscles. And I know most ladies, when you get those flaps on your arm, they want to die. Not die, but I mean, they really don't like that. <laughs> That's normally the first complaint that I hear when people talk about their physique is those flabby arms. Chicken wings, we call them. Exactly that. <laughs> and, and I mean, looking at that, I'm, you know, and people, sometimes I feel like people don't really under, they underestimate how really easy it is to put a little bit of an exercise program together. Mm -hmm. For example... If I am a young mother and I have a baby, to sit with your baby on your leg, that baby is a weight. True. Then you can lift that little baby playfully, not hurt, it, hurt the baby obviously, but I mean that is a weight. If you look at your own body, your body can become your own weight. Um, you know, doing your house chores, I mean if you're a housewife and you spend an hour and a half uh, vacuuming your house and doing all those kind of chores in the house that also counts for exercise people think exercise. you know that it's too it's too difficult to include that into your daily routine but that's actually very very far from the truth yeah that's far from the truth um what i also wanted to um, say is you don't have to spend so many hours on a daily basis training yeah. a training session can be short as 10 minutes okay. 15 minutes 20 minutes and anything from just walking walking fast to doing body weight exercises like push-ups and air squats, um, all of that can count up and it okay. can make a difference in your, in your life. Uh, from my research as well, I have learned that 12 minutes is a very good yes. number of minutes to strive for every day because that is actually your sweet spot. Anything less than that is not ideal, but anything from 12 minutes and up, they say, is quite beneficial. Is that, do you also agree with I that? I agree statement? with that. It just needs to be kind of vigorous. It needs okay. to be fast and high intensity, Wonderful. if possible, so you can get a decent heart rate up. Well, that is it, right? The we heart rate. Heart We're rate doing up. this for the heart rate. <laughs> That's That's not checking yourself in the mirror <laughs> and doing a selfie and your latest pose. No, that doesn't count. Do it has is that right? For 12 minutes, <laughs> yes. So, Anna Marie, when I met you, uh, you, you shared a very personal testimony about how this whole exercise journey of you started. So, would you mind just sharing your testimony as much as you want of it with us, just to give the listeners also an idea of how all of this fit into your life as well? Yeah, well, growing up, I think from being a teenager, I think that's where the body, body image um, problem started with all your friends being skinny and tiny and fit into number 30 pants and you struggle to get in a 34 because your thighs are too big. 
kind of a thing, but I've always been sporty. So I've always done sports in school. And because of doing sport and taking it very seriously, I built, I built muscle easily. So where I thought I was just fat, it wasn't really fat, it was just the muscles. Okay. But I didn't see it that way when I was little, so, or when I was a teenager. And I've tried everything to be tiny. Like what? Everything, like <laughs> stop eating for days and do whatever I could, but it wouldn't happen. But unfortunately, I wasn't built genetically the way my sisters and some of my friends were. Okay. I was just shorter and a little bit bigger, and then that was how it was. But I wasn't willing to give up my sport, so um, I've always done that because that helped me cope with a lot of other issues I had in my life, like stress and, and the things that went out on home at that point in time. Um, growing up, eventually got married, had kids, um, had a first divorce, um, you know, got involved again with somebody, married that person. And when things started getting gone wrong, um, I had a lot of other issues I had to deal with in that days was um, poor self-esteem, um, nothing to vent out on. Mm. Um, and then eventually I joined our local gym. Okay. And at that point in time, I started um, working out, building confidence, meeting other people. Um, and that kind, of, that kind of helped a lot with what I went through. So I would definitely recommend um, training for anybody that just wants to start somewhere, just to get themselves some help. Even just physical exercise will also help with gaining your self-confidence back. I, I agree, and I think what also I find very helpful, especially when I do like things like the line dancing, it takes your mind off everything. Exactly. It's like you, you don't even, like those th things doesn't even not exist in your life. And I find that it's so helpful to, to engage in those kind of activities because it just absolutely takes your mind off things. And I find that very helpful as well. And it's so true what you're saying, you know, having a slimming clinic before in my life, um, I always um, was quite in, uh, shocked about what people say to me on a daily basis that I cannot... Or if you say they uh, they want to lose weight, they say they can't, or they're big boned, or they um, or they will never be so small. But to ask a skinny person or a person that's right, you, you will ask him how do you, how do you do that? Then they will say, oh, I can eat anything; it doesn't affect me. Oh, yeah, I hate it when I say that. <laughs> I hate it when I say that because it never worked for me. <laughs> and and it was quite ironic when I had my slimming clinic. I actually had them wear armbands around their arm, and every time that they said something negative to themselves, it's like uh -uh. you remind yourself that you actually continue to play this record over in your mind. And my husband said such a beautiful thing the other day, and I thought, oh my goodness, I really need to focus on, on that saying, what he was saying. He was saying that every time you say something negative to yourself, you're shelving it. Yes, and your body listens to you. And the and devil gives you more can things. also use that. So if you are on a day saying to yourself 15 times, I will never be fit, I will never be that, the devil can use 15 times. You can imagine how quickly that accumulates to yes. quite a war against yourself exactly. with your own words. And it's not the devil. It's actually you speaking those words over yourself. I see. So, listeners, take this to heart. Every time you say something negative, you're shelving it for the devil to use later on you. Please, let's, let's talk positive to ourselves. Um, and then also another thing that I would just like to share. When you are bigger built and your, sh and your shoulders and your hips is the same and you've got a tiny waist it's still an hourglass exactly if you are a size zero or a two or a four or a ten it's still an hourglass absolutely so it is just crazy um looking at how your body image can affect your way that you feel about yourself and it's actually very a lot of the time it's actually a very skewed image that you have or that people have oh, of themselves I, absolutely if i can just pop in again to my to my past so the other day well a few years back um i found my matric farewell dress yeah i can think i think my one five will go through that dress now um, wow so small i was wow. and i thought i was fat goodness I told myself I was fat and I look at that dress and I wore it and my matric for a while and now my one time I might go in that dress. Wow. So, that, so it just, that is true. You look at yourself in the mirror as such critic. Yes. And I mean, God said you should love your neighbor like yourself. Yeah. If you can't love yourself that way, 
the perfect way. How can you love your neighbor? And also, I don't think a body needs to be skinny. I think we also put a um, stereotype on it. Yeah. Each and every one of us are different. Each and every one uh, um, has a different body type. You just need to make the best with what you've got. You that's know, all that's important. I'm, like, very so, I'm so glad you mentioned that because even skinny people, there's a lot of um, things that can go on with a skinny person. A skinny person can have bulimia. A skinny person can have anorexia. A skinny person can have high cholesterol. Just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're healthy. So exactly. at the end of the day, the goal is being healthy and not being skinny or not so skinny. I don't think that is a criteria. I'm so glad you also mentioned that because God said we were made in His image. In other words, we are supposed to accept us exactly the way we are. Yes. If He wanted us to be skinny, He would have created us that way. If He wanted us to be bigger bold, then He would have made us that way. So I think the biggest gift we can give ourselves is to accept us for who we are in his image and then become the best version of herself not the lazy version of herself like the Proverbs 31 woman with the strong arms and she's not lazy because that is also what is expected from us and I also just want to again read that verse in the Bible that says do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you whom you have received from God you are not your own you were bought at a price, and what a price it was. Yes. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So, you know, we have got a assignment or a, you know, God has asked us to look after these temples and not harm it. I mean, surely, if we know that something we put in our bodies is harmful, we, why will we convince ourselves that it's fine? Because I'm going to add something in there. So for many years I've been a smoker. I've been a smoker since I was, I think, in the trick okay. as well. I started because of peer pressure. All my friends were smoking. I wanted to try to. Yeah. So I started and I was hooked on it for many years. I tried to quit many years for many times, but it never would work. Okay. And eventually I had to pray over it. Luckily God delivered me from that. So it was instantly and I could stop smoking. That was amazing. <laughs> But from, from being a, not, a, 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 a smoker, I can relate why it is so hard for people to stop, but also how important it is to stop. Yeah. Um, we are not meant to be smoking. We are not to be drinking that way. No. We are, our, temp- our bodies are temples, like you say. Um, but just as smoking and drinking is not good for you, overeating is not good for you either. Yes. And not exercising also is not good for you. So this. I look at it this way, and that's what that is. That what that's what drives me every single day is. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Being overweight and being unhealthy is going to be uncomfortable because you're going to struggle walking. You're going to struggle breathing if you're smoking, and being fit and healthy is also uncomfortable. But you're going to have a better version of yourself. So choose your uncomfortable. I mean, which to, what which one do you want? And what you're doing today, you might not see the results today. I'm smoking 30 cigarettes a day. I'm not seeing the results today. Yeah. I'm going to see it when I'm 60 or 70 sure. years old. The exercise I'm not doing today is the muscles I'm not going to have by the age of 65 when I fall down the stairs and break my hip. If I had the muscles then, I might have saved myself. Yeah. So your your whole body, your whole body, your um your bone structure is supported by your muscles. If you yes. don't have muscle structure when you are older, you are going to mm-hmm. pay the price for that. Oh my goodness! And the amount of older people I hear these days that have to go for knee replacements and hip replacements and all kinds of replacements. You know, and it's because they, like you say, they don't have got muscle that they can rely on in order to overcome those injuries that they are sustaining. Um, you know, and then coming back to that, you know, how do you, I, I also, we were talking about this last week as well. Do you also um, ag- agree that it's better to not say I'm going to cut back, but that you stop doing something completely, like cold, go cold turkey? And what I mean by that is, if you know you have got a sugar addiction, not to say I'm going to try and eat less McDonald's, but you cut out McDonald's altogether. <laughs> or what would your stance be on, on something like that? Or is it too harsh in your opinion? Um, I, would, I would say every person is different. Some okay. people have a very strong mental toughness yeah. and they can decide to do something and do it immediately and quit and stop doing it. Other people need to change their lifestyle slowly but surely. So it all depends on the person. So I'm going to take one of my clients. He was very overweight when he started cross really started with me personal training with you about a year ago almost a year we counted the other day 
And at first we just did normal just exercises. I, he was very overweight. I didn't touch the subject of eating okay. at all. I just got him moving, got him fitter, got him faster. And then one day I, I opened up the subject and I said, okay, now you can do this. Now you can do that. So now we are going to work on your eating. Baby and then I gave him a diet. He's, he pulled up his nose. He wasn't prepared to do it. And then slowly but surely he started making changes. He took out the Coke. And then he took out this. Wonderful. Now he's, he's actually weighing his food. He's lost, lost a huge amount of calories. I'm so proud of him. And he's moving very, very well. So that is a life changing for him. So I think each and every person is different. Sometimes it, it takes some time. Sometimes it can be instant. It's like going back to the saying is how do you eat an elephant little by little. <laughs> little, by little. So I agree with you, you know, to take one thing out and manage that first. Yes. Not try to do your sugar and your coke and your all your bad habits, but start at least with one, but cut back as much as you yeah. as much as you can on that thing. So we can really say that it's a case of one, one size does not fit all. No, it doesn't. You know, the exercise programs will differ, the eating programs will differ. As even why my clinic, clinic was called My Slimmy Secrets, because every single person is unique. The exercise program looks different. The, the eating program looks different. But I would like to encourage um, the listeners as well. When we're looking at weight loss, would you also agree that it's better for them to train in their fat burning zone in the beginning? Or can they immediately go into a more of a me metabolic high density exercise program when they want to lose weight? So if a person is um, really overweight and has never trained before, yeah. I would not suggest high intensity heavy weight training. I would incorporate it very slowly. Okay. Um, just do whatever he, he can cope with yes. and then build on from there so any movement is fat burning movement if you if you walk it's fat burning if you go on a bike and you drive ride the bike it is fat burning yes um but also remember that you eat need to eat in a calorie deficit but yeah. i think you covered it last week um so um i would say it depends on your level of fitness don't overdo it because it's no use. You get on that, you go for your first day to the gym, you go all out, you use all the machines, and then you can't walk for three days. And that can happen and then with you... CrossFit easily. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so pace yourself, start slow, start with small little chunks. Yeah. Set yourself up for success, yes. not for failure. Um, not getting something right the first time will demotivate you. So set a goal that you can achieve and then build from there. Oh, I had to love when you said the word calorie deficit. You know, when I go to gym and I see these people sweating and they walk out of there with a peanut butter booster that I know they have just put all the calories and more back <laughs> after that training session. I was like, oh, shame. That is really sad to see that for me. I, it really makes my world pain when I, when I see people do that. And you're absolutely right. You know, we have to also be intentional about... In moderation is better than doing nothing at all. Exactly. And um, so yeah, it, it all, and, and the thing is, that is why I love sitting with you as a personal trainer, because that is how you automatically build in accountability, right? Yes, it's true. It happens, it works for when you're slimming, it, it works for when you are in business, it works especially, especially when you want to train. I know of so many success stories because people want to try and do this on their own. And then they just manage a day or two or a week, and then it's out the door. And I think to have somebody that you can be accountable. And I was so I was really chuckling before that we started our session where you talk about these people that start training. And when you take your eyes off them, they start doing all this grace. I was like, stop! <laughs> what are you going to doing? You're going to hurt yourself? You know. So it's important that you need to know. It also doesn't help to go to the gym and you sustain all these injuries because you actually don't know how to even properly do these things. So for me, you know, personally, I would just rather pay and a personal trainer and I know that I do this, this exercise properly than just trying to figure it out on my own and actually doing more harm than good. Yeah, that's true. So, so how do you find accountability helps your clients because they know you have their backs in terms of that? Accountability is important. You need somebody sometimes because training is hard. Yeah. It's not easy to wake up early in the morning to go and train before work. Yeah, or takes... after work you're tired and you've had a long day and everybody's been shouting at you. Now you still have to go train. Yeah. So by the have a personal trainer there waiting for you makes you go. 
And if, especially if you paid a lot of money for it. <laughs> yeah, and then you feel it on your and pocket you, as yes. well. I so, believe. Yeah, also, but I want to, I feel that um, I've got a personal relationship with my clients. Um, Wonderful. I take them seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I take them personally. And I will, I want them to walk out of here empowered and strong. Not only physically, but also mentally and also um, emotionally so make yeah. boost him up a little bit um so you're more than just a personal training and you're the psychiatrist you got yeah. everything for them I'm sure you so, are and for me it, it gives me so much joy and pleasure to see them grow get stronger physically and just build that mental toughness that they need absolutely and can we just say that this is a journey it's not a sprint oh for sure you know it's going to take time you know you have gained all that weight you have gained or you have lost all that muscles over many many years for most people Mm -hmm. so it's so unrealistic to think that you know you're going to go on this crossfit you know program and you're going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in a week it doesn't happen like that it's no. consistent steps dedication over a period of time that will give you those results but you know on a lighter note Anna Marie I had to chuckle when you were talking to me about your future husband please <laughs> please just share your checklist about your future husband with us you know what are the criteria? Yeah, we are joking about it a lot um, <laughs> in the gym, and I'm like, I make you know, I make everybody know that. But um, I have set high standards because I've set high standards for myself. Wonderful. I want to reach certain goals, yes. and if I'm if I'm going to have a partner, he must be able to have similar goals, and he must not pull me down with him, but rather lift me up with yes. him. So, yeah, so in CrossFit, we've got a movement called bar muscle-ups. This is where you actually do a pull-up, but you pull yourself over the bar and you stand fully at the top. So I said my future husband needs to be able to do 15 of them unbroken, which is almost That's very steep. Hard. Yeah, that's oh, very steep. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> so God, we laugh okay. at it. So today, I must say, this morning, I was at a sports, um, um, a sports day at St. Natal Primary School. Okay. And I've seen the parents and the people. And I was just like, just watching all of them, how they, what the, what the kids are doing, what mm. the parents are doing, and everything. And I'm started looking at men, for instance. I said, is there anyone out there mm-hmm. maybe that is maybe interesting? And then I see, okay, he's got a big belly. Okay, he's got a big belly. Okay, this one is smoking. Okay, this one is doing this. Mm. And I'm, I'm like, no, this, this literally, it's. It's, it's work sad to be done. that there's so many people out there that doesn't take their health seriously. 100%. And it's not like I'm judging because I know I've been a smoker too. Mm-hmm. I've done I've done a lot of you know wrong things too. But you have done the but, work. But um, yeah, so for me, I just think that we all need to wake up as a community and yes. as a society. I think that our bodies are not going to last forever, and we need to take as good care of it as we possibly can. I agree 100% with you. So please tell us uh, about the fitness festival 22 to 23 June that is yes. going to be hosted by you guys. So every year we've got our, our Wildcats Fitness Fitness Festival and um, this one is going to be a, a good one, I think. Um, Lucas really put a lot of effort into this and festival. Money. And money, definitely. And there's also a lot of money to be won. Yes, I saw. <laughs> Wonderful prizes to be won. So um, I'm lucky to be in a good team with um, my two teammates, Amanda and Anna. We're going to be going to take part in the RX division. And um, last year we also did was a huge success. And it was definitely something worth, worth doing. And I hope that we will have as good as um, competition as we had last year. So it's open for the whole country. Sure. Um, and we fit in, you, you, you enter in as teams of three, three females or as three males. And yeah, that is something that's going to, I think it's worth for the whole South Coast to just come and see yeah. what fitness is all about yeah, for us course. and what we do, what is what, what humans are capable of doing. Yeah, and we, and we're, always, we're all obviously going to have different divisions. We're going to have our scaled, which is um, people that still not going to do all the advanced movements. Okay. They start at the beginning. And we all have scale, we have RX, we have masters, which means that when you're older, you can still compete. Wonderful. So sure, I really take my hat off for, for the guys that are already <laughs> old and they can do that level That's of fitness. That's really amazing. And it's so inspiring as well. 
Maybe you can even find your future husband with between the crown Anna Marie. Know. You never, never know. know. Never say never. <laughs> it's all we know. Anna Marie, thank you so much for joining us today on this session. I think this is the list is gonna find this very helpful and very encouraging as well. All the best with your career and all the amazing work that you are doing here in the South Coast. Um, being in my church, I have to witness those muscles on a weekly basis, which is really inspiring <laughs> to me in its own. So thank you very much for being part of this and thank you for also being willing to do this podcast with me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for this awesome opportunity. Wonderful. And let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for being our father thank you so much that you want the best for us thank you that you are with us every step of the day every day help us to be committed in our journey in terms of our health and fitness and that we will be an inspiration to other people around us to also take care of our bodies as the as the body and the temple of the holy spirit thank you for health thank you for victory thank you for uh, a mind that can choose you thank you for the bible thank you for your word thank you for jesus for what he's already done on the cross and thank you that through you everything is possible nothing is impossible with you we thank you we love you and we just want to bless your name we pray this in jesus name amen amen the radio station you can't live without this is your radio this is south coast radio